It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here. With Barnett Bain. Good moment, everyone. Good moment. Are you in the moment? You ready? You here? I am really here. <laughs> I was worried about you being distracted again. Really? Well. You were worried. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, both touching <laughs> and, and, and uh, annoying <laughs> and what no it's not at all oh, what good. my what my wife who um has been uh, teaching me very deeply about the ways of um agency mm. it's uh, a great word it is a good word it yeah is a good word so um i of course am uh, am expert in um worrying about others or um Disguised as love, huh. often disguised. That is great. Usually disguised as love. Usually disguised as caring. You know, my twenty-six-year-old daughter. But it's really a control her, game. Needs her daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, I want to reminder. control the circumstances. It is really about control. It is, wow. it is always about. You just my, told on yourself. That's pretty good. It is always about my own agenda, and so um, we call this. Um, uh, in in the therapeutic model that Sandy uh, is a proponent of, that is referred to as agency, and you know we used to call it petting the horse, <clears throat> which just meant it. that you had an agenda that wasn't what you said. It you know what you, you're you're showing up yes. as if you're I'm being loving dad when truth is you got an agenda. You're yes. running your yes. little racket yes. of yeah. I'm gonna yeah. get in here and yeah. meddle yeah. and yeah. yeah 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 that's good. You told on yourself yeah. It's well, good for you. I, yeah, and um, I was very lovingly, I thought, <laughs> telling on myself so that I could, uh, by uh, extension, uh, inquire whether you were perhaps worrying about me um, needlessly because you might yeah. be concerned that we're on air and I should show up fully. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing I was thinking. Oh, uh, no. <clears throat> so I've been uh, doing some interesting work lately. Yes? Yes. I am Say on more. a circuit of gigs yeah. um, pertaining to women's empowerment. Nice. Good. Yeah. It's interesting. Good. Our mutual friend Gabriel Nosevich, the Nosevich Good. Group. Good. Uh, I'm working with them. It's always nice when men teach women about women's empowerment. Yeah. No, this isn't. This well, thing, it's, it's a team. It's a tootsie roll, right? I'm no. A better, I'm a better man for having been a woman. <laughs> no. I'm on a team. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes Marsha Martin, our friend, and mm -hmm. Susan Leahy, and mm -hmm. myself, and Gabrielle, and then I've got another gig with Susan, which is her and another woman, and mm -hmm. I'm the guy on the panel, as it were, mm -hmm. um, talking about women leadership, um, and so forth and so on. So, it's interesting stuff. Well, women, um, women have, uh, have it very rough right now. That seems to me that um, there is, may, what I am hoping is the last gasp of um, the elevation of pure will and action. What we've called systemic chauvinism. Over, over being and uh, doing. Mm -hmm. uh, over, or, or will and action doing over um, connecting and feeling and the valuing of emotional states. And sharing and building community and... So... Um, in so many parts of the world, um, women are under attack, and in uh, at home right here, um, feminine energies are um, under attack. In places as far or near, depending on where you are, as Ferguson in the news. Mm. Uh, this um, massive. I'm not. Um, I'm not making. I'm not making. There's no big agendas here, but I am simply observing that um, this sort of kind of militarized uh, policing with all sorts of artifacts of boy toys and lacks things. Compassion, lacks compassion, lacks... It lacks... Um, connection. It lacks nurturing. It, yeah. lacks the, it lacks the qualities of being, um, of holding the space for other people to love and grow. We should bring a guest on. Why? Because this is a great topic to have a woman chime in nice. on. Nice. 
That was a good segue. Can you think of a good woman to join this conversation? I can think of uh, many good women, but well, we've we only got one. We <laughs> <have> <laughs> you got to come up with the right one here, Barnett. But uh, we do have uh, one fantastic woman on. We're yep. really honored here to have Kelly McNeilis on. Uh, Kelly is the founder of Women for One. Yep. For um, you men who don't know this, <laughs> Women for One is a global uh, movement. Uh, of, I think it's a sisterhood of, am I right? There's like a, a, up to about 7 uh, million people in this community in like over 60 countries. Is that right, Kelly? That's right. And wow. I'm really, really excited to be talking to you amazing men. <laughs> You've already gotten me excited to talk about women. Well, um, I'm excited about women. I mean, I'm excited <laughs> to be, no, this is very sincere that I am, uh, I find myself remarkably on this platform of women leadership. And I find myself really excited about the possibility of more women taking on uh, what we term as a horizontal leadership model versus vertical. Vertical is very much top down, command and control. You know, the manager in that context is the authority versus this horizontal model where a manager is more of a coach, a facilitator, a leader you know, drawing out gifts and talents in people and people and, and organizing them into ways that they can serve a greater sense of purpose, which for me is really exciting. And uh, my sense is women, many women who are involved in the kind of conversation you're uh, facilitating are up to this. It's, it's quite amazing. Um, it crosses through all cultures and it, I am just honored to have created this vehicle that's growing because the need is there and the, the inspiration and the drive is there from all women all over the world. So it's, it's really quite exciting to see these women and what Women for One is, is it is, Barnett, a, a global movement of authenticity and inspiration. And women come from all over the world through our internet, in, through the great internet and they share their stories of, mm -hmm. you know, and as you've written the book, The Third Story, which I just talk about feeling connected, I just loved. <laughs> um, it really basically put into words what Women for One is, where women have, have, go through a story and experience it. And then their second story is that place of speaking of it. And then this third story is getting consciousness and awareness, releasing it and moving into a self-responsible place. And that's share, inspire, grow. That is what Women for One is about. Well, it's um, the sharing piece is uh, so critical to this. And um, it, I, I think that the sharing piece is the campfire around which communities assemble. Mm. Uh, women well. have always held the space for this. Women have always created, they've created the womb of community. They have always, um, in, the, in the Hopi tradition, they refer to this as the wedding basket. Mm -hmm. uh, they weave a literal symbol of a womb, and inside that womb is uh, held the community. And so uh, the fabric of community is in the sharing. Those are the strands of the weave that, that bind the whole thing together. And so it is very beautiful that you have um, uh, this presence, millions, millions strong, that exactly. gives a voice to women and gives um, that and models for men um, what is required, not simply to uh, do, 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 but what is required in order to knit together a, a sense of connection and community. Absolutely. And I think community is the number one word that the value of a community where we can feel seen, we can feel heard, and we can understand that. A woman, which I know you know this, Barnett, but in, in Women for One, for some amazing reason, which I love, m most of my followers and part of, a large part of the movement is from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And where a woman from a mid the Middle East can become my sister and friend by sharing what she's going through and having a similarity to what a Western woman is going through, because we're all experiencing very similar stories as you know. I'd love you to share 
if you would. I'd love you to share um, e either a, a story about one of your own or one that uh, one that stands out as um, as appropriate for this show right now from uh, one of these women from the Middle East. Well, the one that c comes up for me, um, really, from this heart place when you ask that, is a woman shared that um, her husband, and this is a, a gruesome story, but her husband had beat her and thrown acid all over her, and, and it, she had lost her voice because of it. And she has a, one of those tubes that she mm. breathes through. And she wrote about it. But she not only, she didn't write about it from that victim place at all. She wrote about this terrible tragedy and the uprising that happened in her life and the learning and wisdom that she gained and imparted unto her, her family, her friends, her children, and then moved forward to teach other women in the Middle East about what they need to do to empower themselves to move out of that kind of situation. And what was also so beautiful and kind of was one of those times in Women for One where I was going, okay, what are, you know, really checking in with my intuition, which is a very strong feminine quality. Um, where do we go now? I got a letter from her because I had, we, we send all of our, the women and men that share a token that has a lotus on one side with a red ribbon, like the Tibetan Buddhists mm -hmm. do. Um, and our logo on the other, to thank them as a gesture of, of gratitude. And she wrote back to me and said, I wear this on my tube to remember that I always have a voice mm. around this world anytime I need to, and I remind all the people around me of this as well. That is a, an extremely moving story mm. to me. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful story on a couple different levels. What I like about it, and this is the the place that I come from is that it speaks to, it's a tragic story, but it, the tragedy is the brutality of systemic chauvinism. So what it's pointing to in the collective body is an imbalance that, that's costing everyone. You know, there's this kind of thing that as we sort of move through what was truly an appropriate phase of development that was the feminist movement where, you know, women took on uh, male roles and, and a, a sort of stepped into uh, a male, uh, uh, again, this sort of hierarchical paradigm in order to have a voice. What I see arising right now is a, again, my commitment to a different way, a, a horizontal way, a more inclusive way, a different, a context, if you will, for the doing, you know, an inclusive value system versus the old model of command and control, dominance and submission and so forth. Absolutely. You know, I agree with that. And I also love the idea of the campfire and, and that ancient way, that ancient vision that all, of a, all women and men can hold around the world to have that horizontal way that you're speaking about. I think it's so important and valuable as we move forward as women in the United States and throughout the world to hold that vision because I see a lot of, of women movements and groups and everything is wrong and it's so awful. We have to overcome. And that feels very masculine to me. It does. Uh, and and it, it, it misses the tragedy of that brutality that's mm -hmm. in a system. So the, the brutality in the system isn't something that just women are subjected to. Little boys are subjected to it. Let's, Adult men are caught in it. Let's talk about, um, if, you, if you don't mind, let's yeah. talk about um, the vibe of, um, of the work you're doing, which is about um, what works. Right. Um, and there is a quality that you have, Kelly. We, we had a meal together. We shared a meal together. Um, y you uh, risk delight. And you are willing to be seen as somebody that risks delight and being delighted. Uh, and um, this beautiful story that you've told about a woman who... Um, risks the delight of expressing her voice uh, with a ribbon. Right. That is the, for me, the teaching, that is the campfire that blazes uh, with such ferocity. It's a bonfire uh, 
French for bon feu, it's a good fire. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it is an incredible fire. It's and a good fire. I, I thank you for that. And I, I created Women for One and I became the vehicle for it so that I could do this for myself, move into that truth, that place of truth and authenticity. Mm -hmm. I've been a seeker my whole life. And I, I do believe that through the power of the internet and the connectedness of community on the internet, we can do, we can do this through sharing and inspiring one another through community and then growing and taking action and self-responsibility in our lives. But I think, Barnett, there's this other place where women in the feminine in the feminine movement and, and women for one it needs to expand out into creating chapters in the real person and the human being in areas because through breath, sound and movement, I think that is where we're going to experience our feminine and get into our hearts more and, and really be present, if that makes sense. It does make sense. I mean, through, uh, through breath, sound and movement, we become embodied mm -hmm. um, and it is it is the feminine energy that is the body of the world. The, when we talk about matter, we're talking about mater. We're talking about the mother. So we will come back and talk more about what matters. Right after we take a break, uh, we're going to hear from some of our sponsors, and we're going to come back, and we're going to um, get a round of campfire with Kelly McNeilis. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. This is Barnett. I'm here with Freeman and our guest, Kelly McNeilis. So before the break, Kelly, you, you um, talked about wanting to, um, add to, the, to add to the bounty of the campfire. You wanted uh to add... Uh, breath work and sound, and um, I want to. I want you to invite you to speak a little bit more about um, why and what you have in mind. Well, I I really believe that the breath, sound, and movement um, brings every person into their feminine aspect so much more. And we can talk about this on a, a global level, but I'd like to really focus on the community and personal level for Women for One with this. And because Women for One is a global movement online, our future plans are to have chapters in different areas around the world and with different age groups. We've got one um, coming up in uh, Wesleyan College and one in Cairo University to try them out um, and have women really explore what that feminine aspect of themselves is. And we're developing a curriculum around that so that women can really find their breath, find that sound and find that voice and that truth inside themselves. And I feel like all of that is stored in our body. So very excited to work with women on that as well as working with the online community we have at Women for One. Um, this is so great. So it's a couple of years ago, Sandy and I were in Bali and, um, we visited a healer, and uh, the short version of this story is um, the healer said to Sandy, reminded Sandy uh, that uh, her breath and her sound and her movement uh, were, are embodied and just, just directed her back to a deeper and greater, closer intimacy with mm -hmm. that. And... Um, she breathed a little bit, and some of the uh, liveness returned to the body. Some of the, the, the you, you have a direct felt sense of the vibration in your body, and uh, the delicious feeling of and hearing of a moan. And he then said, "So now your whole body's smiling." Mm -hmm. And she said, "Yeah, I, I can feel it. I can experience it smiling." And then he said, "Now swallow the smile." Oh, Barnett, I think I went to the same healer <laughs> in Bali. Yes, I bet you did. I swallowed the smile. I got that. You got that too. Isn't that I great? I did. It's, isn't that funny? Well, you are someone who has uh, swallowed her smile. Um, you're a smile eater. 
and I want to be a smile eater. I want to be uh, someone who is um, uh, fearless about uh, sharing what is real for me, and um, and and the smile and the excitement and the joy, and that can only happen if we continue to build. Um, environments of community and sharing and only in that can we can we have a network to that to hold each other's smiles i love that the network and i think it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable and imperfect mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it really does and i feel like that's where you find that smile just accepting your whole self and I think women and men throughout the world, I I, I want to challenge them to wake up and be aware of how they don't smile Mm -hmm. and how how they're trying to get it right. And they don't breathe. No, they don't breathe. They don't feel. (sighs) And the real beauty is (laughs) is something that we embody. Mm -hmm. Um, The I feel like I'm harping a little, but I I don't know. I'm going to go with it anyhow. The challenge of the, again, I'm, we've called it systemic chauvinism. I'm going to stay with that language. The, 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 the very constrictive box, the matrix, if you will, of beliefs and agreements about who we are, what's possible, how the world works. That is so much around outcome, so much around um, ideals that someone made up, right? Ideals of one's body. This is specifically, uh, you know, tricky for women, um, where they've got to look a certain way and where, uh, and men, I think it's very oppressive to men as well, that they're supposed to, they're successful if, you know, they make a lot of money, if they've got power and control or something of this nature versus a sense of personal empowerment where, you know, they've redefined for themselves what success looks like, uh, and for women. Uh, and the, 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 the big premise from your work that to me just feels like a relief is authentic. The idea that we can, uh, really embrace in these stories and in people willing to be vulnerable, that there's a, uh, a humanity that allows us all to take a deep breath and, and, you know, relax into a sort of innate well-being. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I also think, you know, we get stuck in the idealized image mm-hmm. that we have agreed to take on in our mindset, in our heart, in our soul, and our personality has agreed to that. And so I almost feel like it's the stripping away of that, of, of those idealized images. It, it really comes back to self and personal responsibility, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So, yes, we can look at it on a community level, but obviously... I believe it starts with me Absolutely. And, and, uh, and really taking a look and being aware of what I've decided personally to take on as my idealized image and stop blaming the culture and society. And I'll give you a little example. I was asked to be a frontline voice for a huge campaign about body image. I went on for an interview and I talked about self-responsibility and they called me and said they can't use me because... We have to blame the culture. Yeah, but this is a tricky one. So I agree with you. I really mm-hmm. agree with you. And yet we look at the collective experience. I, I think the empowered place is to take it personally, right? Mm-hmm. To say, right. how do I own this personally as a reflection for me so that I can make choices that are in alignment with what I'm up to, right? And right. that's how the, the, the collective changes is, is it's made up of individuals and the individual taking on their own sense of individuality is what shifts the dynamic, as it were. Right. Um, that's, one, that's one point of view. All right. It's not an ultimate point of view. It's one point, it's one point of view. Okay. I'm just throwing it out, that it, well, that it is we, one point of view. I, I personally um, am inspired by where you're coming from, Kelly. Uh, if, it is, if I am responsible for, for me then I have freedom uh, and I can love another. And, uh-huh. and um, the rest will take care of itself. It's not my job. Speaking of agency. Spe- <laughs> speaking of agency, yeah. yes. So as, um, as a um, blue ribbon agent, <laughs> when I cut free of my own agency through 
breathing and my own awareness of my own aliveness in my own body, then I can show up for somebody else and one thing at a time, I, I can be a part of a community. Um, right. I love that you're talking about dancing because so, it's so clear that you know, we have so many ki different kinds of creative intelligences and it's not all in the head, but end up to be attuned to a body intelligence and to dance. It's it's uh, generative. I dance in the world is a brighter place. <laughs> the movement. The uh, movement. I, I recently went to a Sheila Kelly retreat, and I moved my body like I've never moved it before. Yeah. And I was like uh, more alive as a woman than I've ever been in my whole life, yeah. empowered in the feminine. And I didn't even understand what that meant because we've been raised in a masculine society. And I, I don't want to be so black and white because I do hold opposite. I believe opposites coexist. Yet it is wonderful to experience that place and strip away and get aware of my feminine. Yeah. Uh, we don't build a community of 7 million people um, because, it, it, there, because there is no hunger for that kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I am... Um, I am dreaming and expecting that it will soon be 21 million people, uh, 21 happy? million women and men who are developing uh, a new kind of intimacy with what it means to be, uh, to balance uh, the will in action with the connecting and the feeling mm. and um, the moving and the breathing and the aliveness, that aliveness. You know, I, I'm, I'm with you guys 100%. The, my sense is that as I own my own responsibility, my own ability to respond to whatever's showing up in the mirror that I'm calling the culture, that it's mine to own and respond to, and simultaneously having a vision of the world I want to create. And, and I do that with my choices, moment to moment, the choices I make create the world that I'm up to creating. Um, and that's the way that when feedback comes in, that I'm challenged by, that I can respond in the most empowered way. And the building of a community, which you've done, that represents, um, it, it, it seems to me that this was a, 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 and maybe you can fill this in, uh, the impetus for it was a personal need, uh, your own desire to have an outlet and a community and a place to express. I, is that accurate? Absolutely, and I feel like the, the most powerful and important movements, causes, project, creative projects all come from that yearning, that passion and it's, that we all and it's, have inside ourselves to grow, because really that's what all it's about. Yes, and it's yours. So the idea that you were taking care of yourself and putting out what you had to put out in the world, that people came to it, is, an, it, it, it is a reflection of in my mind, the generosity of what you were putting out, right? Because it was yours and you put it out and you risked it. It was about you doing what you needed, but that people responded to it this way that the collective reflects back to you. Yes, that's what we want, right? It's the, there's a Buckminster Fuller line that you don't rail against what you don't want. You know, the systems that don't work, you create new systems that make the old systems obsolete. Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. Blair so Geyer. that there Blair is Geyer. an imbalance. I think it's worth noting, but I think it's just as important to say, great, what is balance for me? Create that. And the imbalance ultimately may just take care of itself. It's interesting you're talking about like that, because I didn't think about it at all like that as, as it was being created. And still to this day, mm. I really felt like I want to write. I hear women for one. And obviously, I have to have some strategy and goals and, 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 part, and put that masculine place into it, that linear mindset. But generally, I really am walking through what my intuition is saying and not having this outcome-based uh, movement at all. I'm like, okay, where is the energy going to go now? Not from a real wishy-washy place, but from an incredibly empowered place of the feminine. And I've discovery, been... and a place of discovery, because who yeah. knows? It's playing out in front of you, right? This it's makes, a delight. This makes me laugh so yeah. much. Um, 
I am, have been married for 34 years. Um, oh, my goodness. I think our anniversary is next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sandy wouldn't know either. So I know. Like, that's we beautiful. We always, like, my right in-law always calls up and says, you know, happy anniversary. And we look at each other. And, I, I got to look at but, my phone because she, my wife just texted me, like, two days ago saying, when's our anniversary? So good. So classic. So, um, <laughs> what is our anniversary date? Right there. You're a witness. So, Sam is a... Oh, that's um, funny. Uh, just a... Um, a, a powerhouse of uh, I, I, I know her and I know nothing of her at the same time <laughs> um, but she ran a gigantic gigantic um, very well known international clothing uh, company for many many years and it's gone now it was called Bugle Boy Jeans and I would uh, sometimes I'd hear her doing business and it's not at all the way men do business <laughs> I'd hear her doing business, and she'd have these huge organizations and teams, and she would say, you know, you'd, I'd hear her, and she'd be, she'd be saying, uh, they'd be talking about receivables and shipments, and then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, my God, you, were, you had that date last night. How was it? And then they'd go <laughs> off for, like, five minutes, and they'd go, and then they'd be, you know, something would happen, and you'd, she'd say, Oh wait! It's somebody's birthday today. How's you know? It's somebody's baby's birthday today, and they'd go off on somebody's like birthday and their like first day of school, and it was, it was like serpentine. And I used to. I one time I had. She wanted me to consult on something that was happening, and I'm sitting in one of these meetings, and um, I was uh, young, and um, I'm I'm cutting myself some slack here. <laughs> I'm giving, I'm getting, I'm begging for forgiveness beforehand. I was young and impatient, and I couldn't handle this meeting. I just, <laughs> I just, can't we all get to the point? And everybody, everybody looked at me like, that is the point. <laughs> so I so completely, I so completely uh, hear you, and we are in the midst of a world becoming new something very very new mm -hmm. is uh being a birth that is greater than the sum of the parts and all that's so interesting these the 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 beauty of the pieces of this discussion how they fit together and yet something um with uh, a beautiful fury uh, with uh, sound and and music and um alive with the dance of life is is happening at the same time it's also very great. exciting yeah. it's so great so i want to know um how you are going to bring the sound component and the breath component and the dance component how you're going to bring that uh, into play with the community? Well, like I said, we have two new charters, whatever we're going to call them. It's kind of still coming to me <laughs> um, in the fall starting. And one is going to be in Cairo University mm -hmm. and one is going to be at, at Wesleyan College. So for young women, which I'm really ex excited about working with young women, I have team members in each of those places that are very familiar with our belief system and how we roll things out. So I'm working closely with them. And I'm also doing a couple of retreats um, in the uh, Arizona area and Seattle area in the next year called Authentic Wellness, Well, where we are helping women to move into their power, create a new vision for their life, and really strip away the layers of what they believe themselves to be mm. in their body and also in their soul. Can I come? Yeah, this is Absolutely, the... I'd love for you to. I would really love to come to that. <laughs> I'd love for you to. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> that is so exciting. Is... Well, the idea, again, that it, I, I think one of the qualities of this moment in time is that women are early adopters, but the offer of the rebalancing, if you will, where there's more context, there's a more generous context for the doing, um, is something that's attractive to men and women. I don't think, I think it, women are leading clearly in my mind with uh, creating a new paradigm, but it's a generous offer for everybody. It's, it's been uh, incredible. Most of my mentors or inspirers, uh, people that I've been inspired by in the last six months have been men. Sure. 
it's been fascinating. Men that have really stepped into their feminine nature and embody it, because I think it almost takes more effort sometimes for men, and it's, it's such a paradox that they can look at it more clearly, where women, it's more meshed on them, and, and they think they're being into their feminine, but it's, it's a lot more challenging times to succeed in the world. The, the, the world is changing, though, because I think that as we move towards, uh, you know, things are speeding up. And so innovation is required. And that doesn't happen in the slow hierarchy way. So entrepreneurialism, which women are attracted to in droves, this collaborative leadership model that I'm talking about, uh, it's highly dynamic and creative and more likely to adapt fast. That's my personal belief. So I see the whole leadership paradigm shifting and the world shifting to match that in my personal from my personal vantage point and I think um, the one piece that I think we need to wrap all into that I saw that as you were talking is just wrap that heart opening into every single thing you're speaking about yeah. um, and feel that place it's funny there's a little saying that uh, I use often where um, we're talking about communicating and communicating ideas and the languages if you open your heart before you open your mouth it's likely your message will be well received mm -hmm. and it's a neat little mantra about where are we coming from and I think you're right when we're opening our heart and it's a heart based heart centered decision-making or value structure even uh, that then provokes decision-making uh, or informs decision-making maybe is that's a shift and it feels good and everyone gets included and everyone wins and you may we may not have to um, say anything hmm <laughs> absolutely yeah not good for radio, but uh, it can be very powerful in life to just everyone go quiet for a minute. Well, but let's get still. But I do believe, I mean, I, I can feel both of your hearts when I speak to you. So I think everybody that's listening can go into that kinesthetic sense. And it's not woo-woo. It's, it's really so powerful to me. And this grounded spiritualism, I think, is just an amazing tool we can all use and learn to become aware of ourselves. Great. Hearts are open. All fall in. So we want to send the open hearts to uh, wherever, Kelly, they can find, get involved, join the community. So can you tell our listeners um, the landing place? Absolutely. It's uh, www.womenforone.com, and that's F-O-R-O-N-E dot com. And we also have a very large presence on social media. You can click the share button and share your story through a video, audio, or written submission. And we have all the guidelines there, and we'd love to hear from everyone. Awesome. And we'll have this uh, information available on the Cutting Edge Consciousness website as well. So if you get a little confused, you can always click through that way to get to this platform. And thank you, Kelly, for being with <laughs> us today yeah. for everything that you are. And, uh, and that you're doing. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, everything you're being and everything that you're doing. Uh, we're really mm -hmm. grateful to have you on Cutting Edge Consciousness. We look forward to having you back with us again very soon and sending you lots of heart and everything that you, um, everything that you are going after. Thank you, Barnett and Freeman, for your inspiration and your support. I really appreciate it. Awesome. And for those of you listening, stay tuned because we'll be right back after these messages here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here with Barnett Bain. Back. That's true. We're back. We are back. I'm that was sort of back. That was great. Wasn't that good? Yeah, she's really interesting. Neat lady. So, uh, so many things about that conversation that excite me and hmm. stir my heart. Uh, the breathing. The dancing. The moving. That's new for you. <laughs> yeah, the dancing. The dancing is, yeah. Um, there's a little aside here. Uh, no, no, it's good uh, for you. Get your so, campfire so going and yeah, I would, your bonfire and Freeman's wife, Jasmine, oh. and Sandy, uh, they uh, realigned my dancing uh, deal. Some skills and tools. And um, 
I'll just be flat out uh, real about it. So they said they did a little dancing <laughs> intervention. They dancing said, you know, intervention. Listen, your dancing is uh, scary, <laughs> and so uh, they they gave me a couple of uh, dance steps that I can manage. You're moving too many body parts at one time. Way too many body parts are <laughs> There's moving. There's a problem. And not with that. well. Not moving <laughs> smoothly. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, but the thing about dancing is that. Dancing is a generative act. It's I love gen- it. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's a generous act. I'm saying it is a generative act. Mm-hmm. It is a causal act. I love when Jean Houston came on and she talked about the tribe in Africa that had some problem with their water system. Mm-hmm. And um, they uh, did just that. They, got, they built a bonfire and they danced. And they were, in essence, dancing the problem. And mm-hmm. the next day, the following day after this ritual, mm-hmm. they had solutions. Yeah. And Gene... It engages your, uh, your body is the first outpost of your subconscious. And so you are engaging uh, your subconscious. You are creating an intimate relationship. You are forging a conscious relationship, not with your world of thought. A, a beautiful intelligence, right? But with a a uh, conscious awareness that transcends and includes your thought world. So you're engaging in 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 you have much many more cylinders uh, firing, and answers answers begin to come uh, metaphorically. You start to, to, you know, life becomes poetic. You're into the poetics of it. It's Maybe another. It's, it's another way of processing. It's another way of taking, uh, a moving, uh, whatever the energy is, through a different set of filters and modulators, and and something else pops out. I think it's great. I mean, I think of just um, Jasmine, for example. You brought her up. That she will often, when she's getting frustrated or uptight or whatever, she'll go for a run or, or we both will go do yoga or mm-hmm. something of that nature. Mm-hmm. I go for a walk mm-hmm. and I come back and I'm fine. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's something about, or, or even just, or, come, or sometimes we come back, we're not fine. I mean, the that's world right. Is in no, that's right. Quite a, um, quite a difficult, um, place. Quite, uh, everything seems to be so challenging. Uh, the solutions for the challenges that we face are, are not inside what is already known. Right. Uh, we're not going to uh, figure it out by uh, rifling through the filing cabinet or the hard drive. And so... Um, so why not dance it? Our hearts are often uh, broken open. Hmm. Or they close down and we get hardened. But um, when our hearts are opened, we have an opportunity to kind of um, uh, keen and grieve, uh, you know, with the world, uh, mm. to feel the world, and to move with the world uh, in in different ways that that are that are not just logical, and are not just reasonable, but uh, that are more than that. And suddenly, we did a show with uh, Roger Houston uh, recently, and. Yep. We talked about the sort of poetics of things, and I remember how very deeply that poetry moved me, much more so than previously when it was um, theoretical and academic, and these were dry ideas and conceptual. And, but I remember it moved me in my heart. It, I could feel it in my body. Uh, it was more of an emotional connection. So there... It is a sign of the time that there are, we have access to more aliveness, and that aliveness is not coming through the part that is already very alive, the thinking, but in the moving and in the being and in the intimacy with our subconscious, aliveness. Yeah, I love that line, you, you won't figure this out in your head. Um, yeah. I remember actually Scott Cody said that to me. He, I was, I was, I had something had gotten stirred up in me and he commented, he said, are you thinking about it? And I said, yeah. He said, you won't figure it out in your head. And, and that of course is the Institute of Embodied Wisdom. So the point is to get it in your body and to find a different way of processing. And the bigger point is what do you, you know, your body is a relative thing. It's relative to your point of consciousness. Hmm. Hmm. Your body, the world is your body. Now, that's a concept. There's not too many people, or maybe there are, and I just am the last one. But there are not too many people, I think, who 
who are have that level of, mm. of consciousness that they are able to actively relate to the whole world as being their body, except when we're dreaming at night. And now we're back. We're a few, now we're back a few shows. Sometimes we're <laughs> lucid. Got back four shows on me. Sometimes we're lucid in that dream, yep. and we realize that I am the little figure in the dream. Yep. Also, the whole dream is yep. my body. And sometimes we know that when we wake up, yep. that um, I dream the entire thing, and everything that went on in there was. Well, that was actually earlier what I was talking about with the collective is it, if I can take the collective personally as a reflection of something that I'm interpreting and experiencing and own that, then I can respond in a more empowered way than just feeling overwhelmed and wanting to manipulate control or fix something external. Mm -hmm. So then I'll be okay. If I start with me being okay and relating, that's a better, uh, more constructive response to the noise as it were. Mm -hmm. um, hey Spence, where are we at? Three. Two, uh, three. Mm -hmm. That's good. Got a few mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I'm excited about, it's interesting because I want to track back too to the opportunity to, as a man, be on this, you know, circuit of women's empowerment, women's leadership um, opportunities, platforms. And why do you want that? Whether I want it or not, I don't know, but it's what's happened. So it's mm -hmm. arisen and I see it as a um, opportunity to... Uh, I'm going to learn a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm personally, I mean, Kelly pointed to this, working on coming more from my heart, getting out of my own head, integrating, having a deeper context for decision making, um, putting the clutch in to use your language on my desire to win or manipulate or control things. Um, cause at this point I see the imbalance personally in my own, you mm -hmm. know, programming. So mm -hmm. Uh, just like you said to her, I want to come, mm. you know, because I want to be on the campfire. I want to get into my heart and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. those are the reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't often hear women, uh, talking about, uh, leadership in that way. Uh, although there are many, many leaders who are women and there is a very different style of leadership that women do that mothers do, but uh, it's, inter it's very interesting to me that um, the, lead the, the leaders who I respect most are not talking, um, that don't refer to themselves as, as leaders. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, particularly the women. Again, through, through um, some of the relationships that I'm privileged to have, I have exposure to um, a great number of um, very, very um, powerful women, but their power is held very differently. I think even the word leadership or leader may itself be a little brittle and mm -hmm. caught in the Absolutely. in the masculine and the um, uh, systemic in the hierarchy. Yeah, in, systemic in the, chauvinism. You know, I mean, we've used that word. Um, you know, the systemic thing. We've used that for quite some time. We got to find a new word. And it is well. It's. I think it timed out. It's a doubt on this. All right. So what, what we invite you to do is come back next time. We'll have a new word for it. We're going to have <laughs> or maybe several or words. maybe we just don't even maybe it's not relevant anymore. Yeah, that's maybe, nice. Maybe, I like when something that, you know, maybe um, you know, and maybe some of some of uh, the way we've held things. Uh, is self-evident and not and not terribly relevant. Good. So uh, go back, listen to old shows if you want to tune in and you want to catch the, up. But listen to future shows. This so future we're shows. more interested in where we're going, That's than where, we, right. you know, where we've been on this program. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.